Oh, G, appreciate you smell it. What's that? I don't know, G. I'm over money. You know that. Cool, man. Cool, man. Cool, cool, cool man. man. Man, I appreciate you having me with you, bro. It's all love, my G. Most definitely. Most definitely. And you can let everybody know who you is for the people who don't know, man. I hear you. What you say? You can let everybody know who you is for the people who don't know. Oh, Marcelo from the ghetto, OG. Yes, sir. Where you from? Well, I'm Magnolia. Yeah, I grew up in it. Oh, gas to the city, and I blew up in it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. This Guapo TV and everybody tap in. We got Mr. Marcelo in the building. Yeah. All right, OG. I wanted to um, get in, get in, get straight to it, basically. You hear me? You know, trip and talk. What's the difference between the Cali and the Magnolia? Difference? I don't, I mean, it ain't really different. Like, it's real niggas everywhere. I really different. Like, I, I, I think the Magnolia, you probably was known for more hustling. Cali was known for more jacket. It's real niggas everywhere. It ain't no different from the Cali or the Magnolia, the Melt, St. Tom, the Florida, the Zion. Like, all projects from the real niggas. And what part of the Magnolia you from? The old side or the new side? I'm from the new side. I'm on Willow. Willow. Wild Willow. Now, is it the difference between the old side and the new side for the people who not from New Orleans? I mean, I mean to, to separate them, like the hallway, the shit different than the bricks different. The color of the bricks different, but it's not, not no major difference. Not, not no major difference in the people. Right. Like, which side you would say was the wildest coming up in your time? I, mean, I, I ran on both sides, but I was really on Willow Street. Like, like my domain was really Willow Street. But I mean, I, I moved around to the project. I, mean, I hustled that and shit like that with Willow Street. Like, what's some, what's some notable people you came up with off of Willow? Off oh, Willow? Shit. It's a whole lot of motherfuckers I came up with off Willow. Like, yo, of course, you know, I came up like with Gangsta Hot, or Stone. Uh, Booby Black, Soldier Slum, uh, the Dooney Boys, uh, Bird Gang. Like, you know, all it, it, like I come up with everybody in the project. Like, even Juvie, Turk. Like, our project was like more or less like family oriented. Like, we, the sides played a part, but like that shit wasn't a major part. Like, I know you did that for family shit. Like, I know you were family. That's why we still like that. Like, like niggas still, we still represent each other like that. We still on some family shit. Like that, I always tell motherfuckers one thing about that. No, we hold each other down. We real family. Yeah. Rest in peace, Bo Hickey, a real one. And how, who is Bo Hickey? So OG of mine, uh, not that motherfucker who I came up under. Like I, I learned so much shit from so many niggas in that project. It was insane. Like ridiculous. You know, and I, I think that's that, that a lot of that shit with um uh, like uh, they told me a lot of rules to the game and show the nigga how to survive. Cause that shit I ain't gonna tell you with the cape or being in that project because it was a lot of the shit going on. But once you understand, mind your motherfucking business, stay out of the nigga's business and all that kind of shit. Like, I mean, it wasn't as rough as motherfucker would think it is. But like I said, our project was family oriented. So it was hard for us to, like, we had motherfuckers who got into it and all kind of shit, but a lot of us was really family oriented. You know what I'm saying? All right. I, I get it. I was trying to, like, you could tell us something about Stone that people probably don't know, and who is Killer Stone? Stone, the big dog in Magnolia. Like, see, I always tell niggas a story about this. Like, Stone was a nigga who, uh, who, who really... Uh, put it in my head that I can rap. Cause like I used to be getting words from Stone, right? And when I when I stopped fucking with the music for a little while, I went back to him one day and I was like, "Say, well, I need something." And he was looking at me crazy. He was like, "Man, you tripping? Why you ain't doing no rap?" And I was like, "Man, that shit just not it's not it right now." That dude left and he came back and he gave me a a, a, a brown paper bag with seventy five hundred dollars. He told me to get back to rap. And he could have easily gave me a fucking two ounces or something, the shit that I was doing at first. But he didn't do that. Like, he saw that shit in me. That's, that's why I always got mad respect for stuff. And he always used to be like, you one good rapping motherfucker. He'd be like, see you in that bitch, dude? Y'all two good rapping motherfuckers. So, did, did you know Disco? 
fucking right. I knew Disco. Like, I talked to Disco a lot. Like, it hurted me when Disco got killed because uh, I talked to him a lot right before he came home. And, like, we had plans on doing things and shit like that. So it really fucked me up with this. Who is Disco for the people who don't know? That's Stone Lip Brother. And how did you, like, how did y'all meet in general? How did y'all end up running with each other? I mean, we grew up together. We right. grew up together. Like, they stayed on Magnolia. I was on, I was on Tyler Donald, but I hung on Willow. But all of us, like, that whole project really damn near grew up together. Like. So I'm telling you, that bitch was really family-orientated. And we, I think we saw more of that once we got out the project because we see how, how each other reach out to each other and all that kind of how we look out for each other kids and shit like that. So, you you being in the in the trenches of it during the prime of you know what was going on in that time, what 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 can you say is the difference between now and back then? What was you going on? ain't got no morals and they ain't get no money. Like niggas could say everything they like. Motherfuckers talk about all the killing that was going on in our time. We was getting money. Like if it, if we was doing some killing, that shit made sense. They wasn't doing no senseless killing. It was behind. That shit was behind some of the moves that a nigga was trying to pull off or some shit like that. Think about these little young dudes right now. They ain't got no guys because they ain't getting no money. Like a motherfucker who ain't like, I, 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 I see demons in them little motherfuckers eyes, but they not on money shit. Like that's what fuck it up. Cause the nigga who, want, nigga who really getting some money, you ain't got time for the bullshit. And we used to always say, be fuck up your money. So either nigga had to deal with it quick or we had to figure that shit out. All right. How did you and um Dodo end up linking up? And who is Dodo? I ended up meeting, people who don't know. I met. I, I actually I met Dodo on the penitentiary, right? But me and Doe wasn't like me and Doe wasn't like that. We wasn't cool because at that time, like, like the crazy shit about this shit is, who motherfucker don't know? Dodo didn't kidnap my cousin. What? Yeah, Doe and, and a few dudes out of Cali. We had kidnapped my cousin, right? Yeah. But my cousin had to jump out the car and get away. So when I first saw Doe in penitentiary, like. We wasn't like that. Or we had a mutual uh, partner, which was Victor, New Victor Newman, also known as Victor Simon. And that was my godfather. And Victor used to mess with Dodo's sister. So I came home, and then Doe came home, right? So Victor came, got me one day, and was like, I'm going to bring you around. I'm going to bring you by somebody who who um, fucking with some music. But that nigga brought me around there. He brought me in the fucking house full of Cali. It was like Cali or third G. Like, but us, at that time, us and 3 and G, we, we ain't having no problem. I was fucking with niggas from off the at that time. Right? So when I went in there, I more let, those like more or less said, you got to prove yourself. And I had a million raps, man. I mean, like, I used to write raps, walk around the party. So any beat a nigga put on, like, I had raps on. So he was just impressed by that. And I'm telling you, like, from the day, he dropped me off and left me. I was mad as a motherfucker with Victor because I was like, I felt like he dropped me off and just left me around niggas who I wasn't in like that with. Like, not that I was not gonna happen, but I wasn't in like that. But me and Dodo became damn the best friends from that day on. Like, I could tell you a crazy story. Like, I was fucking with the when I first when I first started fucking with the Calio, like a lot of people in my project wasn't killing that shit because of the because of the war that was going on, right? Yeah. But what I thought was, 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 was show me a difference, come back to Stone. One day, me and Dodo flying up on, uh, we just got the rules. We flying down Washington, right? Because I had stuff hanging in the Cali and everything. We flying down Washington. Dodo sees Stone, but I don't know who he sees. We flying down Washington. That's where our project is. Everybody on the air, the air pack of the motherfucker. Dodo make a U-turn in the middle of the street on the cell. I go behind him, but I'm like, what the fuck is he doing? He pull up right in front of these trees. When he pull up, I pull up behind him. Now, mind you, like, me, I had never seen, like, Ed, I ain't know him in a uh, strong relationship. Anyway, Dodo jump out that truck, Stone meet him in the middle of the street, Stone picking him up, hugging and all that kind of shit. And I was like, I was like, man, that shit is crazy, but they had to build a relationship because of jail. They've been in juvenile their whole fucking life again. Right. The same thing with, uh, uh, it happened twice, though. Not even just with that. Like, my OG KC. Like, KC is a nigga like that's the motherfucker who I can tell you, like, I can sit on, like, that's my fucking OG, because I always wanted to be like KC. KC was a young motherfucker in the project, had all the women, little bitty nigga with a big attitude, and he had money, and he was respected, and he had hands. Right. Later off in the game, I found out 
KC taught Dodo how to fight. Like, that was Dodo Big Dog, too. So that's why, I like, the connection just started coming from different places. It was because the people that I had respect for, he had respect for. So it was different. Then he was fucking with my partner, TB. Like, it was just, like, you know, you, motherfuckers develop a different relationship in jail, bro. Like, once you get in jail, like, motherfuckers develop a different relationship. So, like, it's a different kind of love. Right, no, I understand. I understand what you're saying about that. And coming up in the Magnolia Projects, like, how did they accept you running into Calio at that time? Being with the... Huh? How did they accept you running with Dodo and the Calio around that time with the beef like, going on between like, the I mean, they, I mean, listen, like, you got you to gotta look at it like, motherfuckers fell some kind of way. But, like, we was on some, like, like I, listen, like, we knew we was going for the money, right? Right. And, like, we wasn't really tripping off that. We wasn't on that. Like, we wasn't really we wasn't really tripping off how people felt and all that kind of shit because the music was working. Like, once we put out that Tough Guy compilation and niggas saw that that shit was working, like, we wasn't on no... If a nigga, that, if a nigga felt like that, then it was hate. And we both agreed on that. Like, motherfuckers would just hate. But we understand that, like, motherfuckers have, you know, have their feelings behind past shit that happened, which is understandable. Cause I, if that's the case, I could have had my feeling about past shit that happened. I should never been fucking with those. I should never been fucking with those. Right. But like, what motherfuckers will realize is like a lot of motherfuckers who you you like, especially for young niggas. I used to see. That, I, I I saw this shit as I got older. A lot of motherfuckers who I really wanted to do something to, like I'd be glad to see them niggas. Now. Like we acknowledge each other because we understand the shit that both of us been through. Like, niggas don't be on that shit. Like we literally be happy to see each other. Right. Because the niggas, we understand the shit that we've been through and the shit that we survived. I get it. What's, what's something you can tell us about currency that people don't know? And who is currency to you? That's my brother. My daddy's son. Something I can tell you about, about him that you don't know. Uh, I don't know. Like, he, 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 he blatantly shows you who he is. Like, that's why he lasts so long, because he ain't got to be nobody else. I keep good at being himself. Like, I'm tell you like this. Like, we used to run spit out of the project. Like, I remember one time, uh, I left spit in a, in a, in a car. I had a dear mind to And I left him in the car, right? Yeah. And I was just going to run upstairs. I stayed right on Willis Street. I left him in the car. And I put my gun right there, right? And I was like, nigga, I'm fucking with him, though, right? I'm like, anybody pull up, knock they, knock they fire from there, right? Man, this nigga's about to shoot one of my best friends. Spit he fought, but he like he was just on some. But like we like in our time, what if niggas wasn't with that shit. Like I pushed my little brother out of the street, and they couldn't be around us when we were doing all that. Like only time Spitter came around is when new Air Force Ones came out, a new Jordan, uh, some shit like that. Nigga pop him off and get him around it. Because like in our times, it was like this, right? If a nigga ain't with that shit, you in the way. So some shit pop off, like, you really in our way. Like, you been helping us by being out here. And we was more protecting motherfuckers who really wasn't built for that shit. Like, niggas wasn't, like, these days, niggas pulled niggas in the game. We wasn't pulling niggas in the game. We was pushing them out. Because, like, that was our safety net. Like, niggas was looking at basketball players and all that kind of shit. Like, these niggas who gonna be on in the long run. But we looked at it different. Like, niggas taking chat niggas and all that kind of shit. But that shit wasn't nothing. I just think the money was, the money way different, bro. Like, I don't know, like, compared to the money, like, the money different out here. Do you feel like rap, dope? rappers look like dope dealers, man. <laughs> but that's the kind of money dope dealers get. Like, I'm telling you, well, man, rappers, listen, why well, ain't want to be no fucking rapper? Dope dealers had the most money. All right. You never really wanted to be no rapper. Like, I was damn near forced into that shit. And as quick as I got into it, I was blessed enough to get a check. But I wasn't worried about no rapping shit and all that kind of shit. You got to come give me a Wood Street to go to school with. I wasn't on that shit like that. It wasn't feeding me. How and I, missed, it, I felt like I was missing money being in, in the studio. How it felt having your first hit single in 92, P-Pop? Bro, listen. Like, see that head P-Pop and shit? Bro, let me tell you what's great. Um, like, I don't even know how niggas found out I was rapping. But me and Musa always been tight, right? Like, it go back. It go back. But that's why my relationship with the Cali was like that. Because... My godfather was from the rat hole, but he used to be in the Cali. 
Magnolia, Mel, St. Tom, niggas be everywhere. Right. So, a golf boy used to be dealing with a man named Mike, you know, a, a corner store in the Kelly named Mike's. So, a golf boy would come give me to school and I hang at Mike's. Mike's is in the Cali. Mike is Moose's dad. So, Moose used to be on the cash rest and I'd just be the young nigga hanging in there while I, my dad, my uh, golf father, and his daddy were just taking care of Billy. So, me and Moose have been tight since I was like, like, spit a man to me and Moose have been tight since I was like 12, 13 years old. How it feel being around Master P? I mean, that whole, that whole movement. Like in them times, well, like that rap shit wasn't like exciting to us, and, and like rappers wasn't exciting to us. But I think that shit played a good part for me because, like, I, I don't, I don't never have nothing bad to say. Like, I can tell you some shit about niggas, but like, I can't ain't, ain't much. I got, I, I can't say nothing bad about people because you tell me about copyrights and publishing. I would marry the motherfucker with him when he ain't gonna get on this song with Baby. Because I had the opportunity to put him and Baby. I was, I was the first artist to put Cash Money and No Limit on the same album. But I was supposed to have Baby and Stunner on the same record. Stunner with, I mean, uh, I mean, I thought they had Stunner and Master P on the same record. Baby was with it. P wasn't fucking with it. So I, that's why P was not, a, P, ain't, P not on my second album. How you, had a, how you had a relationship with Cash Money and No Limit? Well, like, the, the crazy shit is, it's a guy named Elder. Elder, right? Mm -hmm. That's baby uh, step up. Like, I come up under him. Like, I had babies. I had kids when I was, like, 13. I had kids when I was 14 years old. My first kid, I was 14 years old. And I used to hang in at 13, which is where my baby mama was from. And a dude named Elder just took a liking into me. But that just happened to be baby brother. Like, you hear him talk about him a lot. Well, sometimes you hear him talk about it, but he was a motherfucker, and he just took a liking into me. So that's like how I started. Like, like I was from the Magnolia. I was hustling in the 13 world. I could be hustling in the flat because that dude took a liking. Into me. So for me to meet uh, Baby, but like I say, Baby and Dodo had a good relationship. All right. And then I grew up right next door to. Uh, Master P cousin Rashid. So I used to always see Master P going right next door before he got on. So we had, we wasn't, everybody wasn't cordial, but we had facial recognition. Like we knew who each other was. Right. Now I understand what you mean. Did you have a relationship with Juvenile? Juvenile, dog. I fucking you. I would tell nigga Juve on the radio. That's a good rapper, motherfucker. Like, motherfucker don't know. So that fucking 400 degrees, bro. Yeah. Juvenile walked y'all through our project. Literally. Like, if niggas go back and look, I'm telling you, like, the niggas name is Dolphins and how it was going down, like, Juve, motherfucker, bro. Like, and every time I see Juve, he called me to say that I called him to know, and he'd be like, you good rapping motherfucker. The Stone used to always tell us that. So every time we see each other, we'd be like, you good rapping motherfucker. That nigga Juve, underrated. Like, that nigga walked motherfucker through our project. Ain't nobody never did that better, better than him besides Slim. And Slim was doing it because he was experienced in this shit. Like, Juve had to get out that bitch and was walking us through it. Slim walked us through it when he was really in there, really living that shit. That was a different ballgame. What was your relationship with, with Slim and... Slim, with, Slim with, used to cut my hair. Slim used to cut my hair. So, like, man, Slim, he been tight. And Slim used to cut my hair. Like, you know what's crazy, like? Uh, my best friend name is Janero, right? That's Slim's son name. Slim named his son after my best friend. Like I said, we used to be on this porch walk, like 2909 Tunnel Dino. Rashid used to cut hair, we used to shoot dice, but we just used to attract boo cool girls. So Slim them used to always come come around there and fuck with us. Slim, Booby Black, Gangster, like all them used to just come fuck with, come around there and fuck with us because we used to have all kind of bras. Like we used to have bras coming from St. Mary's and Seton Hall. Shit like that, like it, it was just that we was attracting. I don't, I can't tell you how or why, cause I don't remember asking that time. But motherfucker just used to always come around there and never be mostly motherfuckers out of project. Like it'll be different kind of motherfucker. All right. And what what was your relationship with Gangster? I mean, I I I I came up with Gangster. All right. Like I've been in the trenches with him. 
And what about the rest of the original Hot Boys doing in Mosquito and Sterling? Do you have a relationship with them? I've been, no, I, I, like, I had enough, like, to, to go back to kids. Like, I'm doing it from uh, P-Town, right? Because I had a baby mom in P-Town. And one day I was back there, and, and me and his little brother, me and his little brother cool too easily. He went to uh, Foshi with him. But I used to be in P-Town just sitting on the porch. And my baby mama, uh, brother and Dooney was tight as a motherfucker. So Dooney used to always be sitting on the porch. And like one time I got into some shit back there, and, he, and she was there for me. Like, and that was before, way before, like, as in him hanging in the Magnolia. But I knew he knew, uh, like, Sterling and, him and all that kind of shit. But Sterling, like, even and when I saw him with Sterling, like, it was a different ball game. But Sterling was my nigga. Speaking of Sterling, when 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 you I want to rewind it back to doing it one time because shout out to Truth Be Told I seen him in his interview with Kenny Boo speak on the video shoot y'all did in the Magnolia you and Dodo and I wanted to speak on can you detail in on did you have to get permission from Dooney to come in the Magnolia to shoot that video? So check this out during that time it was like this right like me and Dooney was already friends. Right. Right? So I had conversations with a lot of niggas. Like I talked to Stone. Like I had conversations with a lot of niggas who saying I was going I want to shoot that video back. And I was just out of respect because of niggas who I felt was my friends and motherfuckers who I felt like was big dog. Like I had a conversation with Jeffrey Sanders. OG, like I, I I just had conversations with him to let him know what I want, what I planned on doing. The thing about that shit was so crazy about it is we were supposed to shoot in a Magnolia early in the morning. We weren't supposed to be in that Magnolia. Like, you got to understand, it was a fucking wall going. The cameraman fucked around and went set up in a Calio first. Tripping. I don't know what made Chris do that. So by the time we get to the Magnolia, it's damn near dark. Like, what a lot of motherfuckers don't know is we ain't have no police. Right. We ain't have no police for the Hamburg in, in, when we were in the Magnolia. But no police out there. But, like, it was crazy. Like, I don't know how the fuck we pulled that. Because niggas really, if you look behind me, bro, niggas was really bumping. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you what happened, though, right? When, when we pulled up, Calio went to coming through. Like, the Calio was coming out the Washington side. And Victor said, I know what to do. He shot, he had excursion. He shot and he went and got hoodies from King Fast. That's why I niggas got on Cali or Magnolia. He went about like 20 Magnolias, 20 Cali. When he came back, he passed them out. And when we getting ready to shoot, I'm in front of the pole. And nobody's behind me or nothing because nobody knows what to do. It's like Magnolia right there, the Cali right there, but it's torture. So Vic, like, man, look, everybody, we just need everybody on the pole. Everybody just got to get behind and sell on. Come on, everybody just get on the pole. Man, to see all them dudes get together like that shit was that shit was way different, bro. And I, I can tell you to this day, bro, I don't know how that shit happened. Like, I don't know how the fuck we pulled that up. But like that's why I had so much respect for like niggas out there Magnolia and niggas out the Calio because they ain't had that shit to do. Like a nigga could have even said, Sell that shit not happening. We not fucking with that. And me as I am a street nigga, so I gotta respect it. I just had to figure it out some other kind of way, but niggas really wasn't on that. Niggas really supported me. Like, that's why I would, any, anytime motherfucker asked me, like, uh, what, was my, what, what helped me with my success, the fucking the street supported me, bro. Like, especially them two projects, them motherfuckers supported the fuck out. Did you did you have a relationship with um, Randall? Kelly Oslam? No, nah, I met Randall before, but not, not like a relationship. Right. You could you could explain to the people who he was and who is he? So Randall was just a, a, a big dog out the Cali. You know, I uh Master P cousin, uh the brother T dub. But like you know what was so fucked up about shit, well, like and I and and, and and uh it took so long for motherfuckers to get. It's like I felt like our time we we allowed um like the younger generation to take on some beef that wasn't footing. 
Because us in the Cali, we used to be tight as a motherfucker at one time, right? And then it came the rumor that gangster killed Randall. And that shit wasn't true. But, you know, Gig being a gangster, like, Gig ain't who the fuck? I went through this shit before, so I understood it. But Gig being a gangster, and Randall, and, and, and you know, it's, it's dubbing them gangsters. The fuck I'm supposed to call a nigga phone and tell him I ain't do it. I went through the same shit with Dodo. I swore, listen, bro. Like, niggas lied, played all them stupid ass games, telling me a nigga killed him. A nigga who I grew up with. But the man that do the post to each other, he was like, who the fuck I'm supposed to tell? Like, I ain't kill no nigga. Like, if a nigga feel like that, then that's what it is. And I, 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 had, to, I had to respect that because, like, niggas ain't, like, this is, in, in these times, man, they ain't calling no nigga talking about what I ain't doing. She felt like I did it. You probably had a person who had that and shit. But I felt like a lot of them dudes took on that shit, bro, and they ain't had that shit to do. Because that shit, really, it, it, it wasn't no thing of that. Because, like, back in the day, the Dooney boy, the Post boy, like, it really used to be running through the castle. You know, like, running through the Magnolia. Like, Post boy Joe used to stay with me. What a, what effect did the, the high boys have on the rest of the street crews after them? Wait, what you say? What effect did the high boys have on the rest of the street crews after their time? I don't think, like, but nothing like the high boys. Like, them dudes was, uh, niggas had money. They was with the shit in their head all the one. Like, that, that, that combination would come like that. That, that comp, it just, I, I don't know, like, and, like, I ain't never seen, like, anyone to, like, motherfuckers would be talking like it's 15, 20 of them niggas, man, probably about 7, 8 deep, at the most. There was motherfuckers. And they really got money, like, the niggas was doing shit, like, you ain't never saw no gangsters with the flash cars. You ain't never saw, like, niggas, now who be playing gangsters, niggas ain't got no money. Like, these was gangsters who had money. Like, them niggas had flash calls, flash clothes. Like, they, they, they just was totally different, bro. Right. Like, they was gangsters who made the, the niggas who were sitting around being dope dealers all day. They made them look bad. <laughs> I'm just telling you, just because of the times and how they rock. Like, and them niggas used to be everywhere. Flies of motherfuckers. Like one thing about that bitch gangster, that bitch gangster used to be fly. Bitch ain't play behind no clothes. And I like I think like our our project was known for that shit though. Like, like we've been on some fly boys. Coming up the way y'all came up, how do you think it affected this generation? I think we just I, uh like what I think um a lot of motherfuckers go like I think like OG gotta take their lick. So like a lot of the shit that's going on with this generation because like after my generation it became a thing of like old niggas being dope fiends dead or locked up so a lot of these dudes had to really raise themselves and OG's would come back out of you know been gone a long time and think you can handle these little dudes like little boys when they've been raising themselves their whole fucking life so they don't have no respect for you you ain't never done fucking things for them see in my time like old niggas done something for me uh they kept me out the way, so I, I I had respect for them. But it came a time when, like, older cats wasn't around. Like, you dudes were getting raised by their mom. When you get raised by your mom, you're trying to hurry up and be a man because you want to look out for your mom. And, like, I always look at it like, oh, I ain't never had no problem with youngins because I, I understand how to approach them. Like, I treat them like men, and I understand where they come from. And I don't be on that old. I'm so much of an OG because I've been around and I did that. Like, I don't be on that stupid ass shit. But a lot of motherfuckers was. Dudes don't be having that shit. I always look at it like how I was in my time. If a nigga, OG couldn't tell me nothing if I ain't fucking. Like, you mind your business. Stay on my business. And you gotta, you, 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 as, as, you gotta respect them to do it when they be like that because they never done nothing for them. It make you think you come call some kind of motherfucking shots. And that's what niggas, old niggas get twisted. Like, it's a difference between old niggas and OG. There's a lot of old niggas out here. And then they trick them to dudes and tell them they was in the streets and all that kind of dumb ass shit. And that shit be false. It be false narrative. So the ones who do lead them, they lead them wrong. Because they be telling them, hey, behind two, three hundred dollars, kill a nigga. No nigga killing no nigga behind two, three hundred dollars. That's a way to get rid of that nigga. That's how you get rid of 
the last 200 years ever get from. But, you know, niggas who ain't never been in the streets, they don't understand how the streets go. So they was leading a lot of our kids along. And that's what, that shit kind of like happening now. And niggas ain't stepping up. Like, we allow kids to, like, we watch them to do, I just said this shit, well, like, we watch them to do become criminals and don't say shit to that shit hit too much stuff. Like, you said seven year old in a store, stealing, you laugh at him. You think that shit funny. Then when he's 13, he's stealing cars. Then when he gets 16, he's robbing your motherfucking ass. You watch them become a criminal. You talking about that such and such, the boy down the street. That shit ain't happening in my time. He got his ass with 13 times. And we got to get back to that. It ain't the kids. It's the, it's the village. The village ain't what it used to be. Like, the village wasn't having this. Like, the village raised the kids. Like, think about all, I know, you know what I mean? The niggas I know who, mamas who's on drugs and all that kind of shit. And them niggas still walk steady. Because they, just because their mama was like that, that ain't mean everybody else in the project was like on some fucking shit. Everybody else was. When them street lights went on, boy, if your ass had to get inside, you can get your ass in. Old nigga named Lenny used to be all of us. Play with Lenny if you want to. One eye, Lenny, Lenny gonna beat you up. But we needed that. We needed that kind of shit. We needed that roughing up and all that kind of shit. Like because when like them dudes would be great, a woman can't raise a man. Like and they be with that like my baby and don't touch my baby and all that kind of shit. You create an animal because. He don't, he don't have no respect for a man. You don't, a man ain't never did nothing for him. So coming up, he ain't got no respect for a man. And then some nigga think he's going to come up and tell him what he going to do and how he going to do it. Nah, play, boy, that's not going to happen. What's your advice to the generation on what they should be doing to stay out of the bull then instead of, you know, entertaining the other stuff? Like, I, I'm more or less on, I'm more or less on old niggas ass. Like, the young generation just doing what they doing. Like, if we'd have had the opportunity, we'd have been doing the same shit. But ain't no, it ain't no motherfuckers who, like, pulling a coattail. Like, and I don't mean telling them what to do. I mean just having the conversation with them. Like, niggas who really come from that shit. Dudes, like, bro, listen. Like, dudes getting that penitentiary, they be a different ball game. But nobody ain't there to tell them. All right. Another question I think somebody had was, who is Baby Kiki, if you knew him? Baby Kiki? Yeah. By the milk? Yeah. Yeah, I knew Baby Kiki. Like, me and his Paul, me and his Paul still talk. Like, I always fucked with older people. Like, I had a ballroom. Uh, it had to be, like, 2009 or something. I had a ballroom right across the street from the milk. Like, his Paul held me down. And I had a bar right across the street from the Melvin Green Brothers. I'm talking about that directly across the street from me. And that nigga used to always come sitting there and just fuck with me. But I knew all them dudes from like my golf fault and shit like that. I knew, like, I never really hung with motherfuckers my age. I always hung with older dudes. I was around older. Oh, I get it. Did you have a relationship with Tonto and who is he? Oh, say, well, like, nigga, let me tell you something. Well, I remember one time, like, told my nigga, one time, um, me and Shorty was going through some shit. Me and Spitter was going through some shit, right? Yeah. In the mix of the music. And that nigga told come through for it. When I, right when I was about to do the Magnolia Boys album, um, one day, Dicky just called me and was like, we're going to do a Magnolia Boys album. I'm like, I'm with it. And he told me who I was going to be in. I'm like, I'm cool with it. So, uh, seeing them come down there to get us. But I'm telling you, we so fucked up. My life's about to go off. Shorty life's about to go off. So we hesitant about going. And Spinner did a tape down there. I don't know which one it was. But we did a tape in that house. So we procrastinate. We bullshit, right? We got them sitting out in the van. We sitting up there. She's so like, let's go, let's go. Right? Then Toe called. Toe called. Toe was like, man, quit. Sell on the phone, me holler. Like, what's up? You're like, man, why you, what y'all doing? Why y'all ain't get on the road? I think, think I don't remember. Straight up with you. I'm like, nigga, rent through. The fucking lights about to go off. All that kind of shit. Nigga just can't move like that. Like, he like, man, listen. Don't worry about that shit. I got you as soon as you touch. I'm like, and Spitter won't bring the dog, right? This is how Spitter used to be because he's always been like that when it comes to his dog. And we in the fucking, we in the Magnolia Boys land. I say, spit it, nigga, spit it, talking about bringing the dog. You say, tell CD, 
stop, get a cage for that dog, bring it. When we got there, they gave us five thousand dollars a piece. We had an Ivory called a fucking song. Like that too different. Like that's 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 why I could a nigga like that is a real fucking big home. And like it hurted me to like, tell a nigga some shit like that because I ain't gonna say it hurted me, but what like I'm uncomfortable with telling no nigga how a nigga fucked up like that because a nigga looked at us different. Right. But I had to just give it to him real. I'm like, man, we fuck up. And like, yeah. man, Toe always had a good relationship. Always. Nah, that's real, though. That's real. That's what a big homie is supposed to do. That's what the big homies nowadays in this generation ain't doing. And another thing. But like, I that's, where I, that, that's where I get it from. Like, I get it from niggas like that. So, like, you know, I'm coming from that Claude, nigga that ain't got no problem with it. Like, and I was trying the last thing a nigga had to worry about was money. Like, niggas were more worried about uh, loyalty and shit like that. Like, money wasn't a problem. Like, that, that's why a nigga missed that project so much. Because you had to be, one thing about that project, you wasn't going to do bad long. Somebody was going to give you something. You had to be a complete fuck up to not get no money in that project. Somebody going to give you something. Somebody going to throw you something. I'm telling you. Off the rip. I get it. Did you know the Magnolia Twins? Did I know who? The Magnolia Twins. Yeah, I know the twin. Like men, it, like me and Shandrick, like me and Shandrick, that's their big cousin. Uh, we had we used to stay in the same house for a, for a good little while, for probably about a year. Me and Shandrick got our baby mom with his cousin. But see, my OG who I do the podcast with, like he used to be over there with Shandrick. Like he used to be over there with the twin, and that nigga was like a fucking uh, a so called bodyguard. Nigga, we used to be so mad with him. That's why I mean that bitch getting to it so much on the podcast. That's my nigga though. But like we used to be, we used to always be going around there trying to fuck with their little workers and shit, right? Like not like 20, 20 we used to have all kinds of niggas working for us. So we used to always try to go down there and pull all stuff. Right. And one time a nigga pull around there and nigga said, man, they got some old niggas sitting around there. Nigga got a big old gun sitting in there. Like, fuck about the old nigga. He swung around there and saw that nigga on, uh, sitting on, he was sitting by the apartment on the cell. And when I saw him, I was like, nah, he ain't to be fucked with Because I knew him from time. Like, I knew he was one of them old niggas who was really on that shit. And when I say Owen, I'm talking about on the gangster shit. Like, nah, we can find, we can find something else to do. I always tell him that. Nah, I get it. And did you have a relationship with Ski Boo? Ski Boo still my nigga. Like, anybody out there, Project World, like, Especially like in this era, like I ain't never had no bad blood with no niggas on my project. Never. Like I'm trying to get Skibu to do a podcast right now. You could explain to the people who is Skibu. I mean, Skibu is one of the motherfuckers who held down. He was with 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 with, with uh doing it with the with the Dooney boys. Like they they had a hit, him and Dooney developed a hell of a relationship. And they got it on, and they looked out for a lot of them to do it. That's why, they, like, I don't think motherfuckers understand the relationship of doing them to do it. Like, that shit was different. Like, them niggas was really getting money. Them niggas had, like, niggas talk that shit about the doing it boys, about how wild it was. Niggas don't talk about the money them niggas. Like, right. I don't know how people skip money. Niggas, niggas, 20,000, 20 racks a day. I'm talking about easy. And nobody couldn't sell no dope up time when them dudes had that shit popping. Nobody. Like, them niggas really had and they open shop and closed it whenever they, at, at times and shit. Like, they was on schedules and all kinds of shit. Like, they was different. And it was really family oriented. Like, they looked out for each other. It was a different breed. Like, when Dooney got killed, that shit fucked a lot of shit up for the dudes. Like, it sent them straight. But, like, I could tell you, like, as then, like, them niggas, it was, they had a different mindset. Like, them the dudes was different. Like, them niggas rockin' pride and iceberg and all that kind of shit for niggas was thinking about. Right. And they really was getting real money. Like, them dudes was at a young age getting real money. And I think people overlook that because they be talking about they doing it, boy, shit like them niggas was so wild, which they was, but you just, you, nobody gave them the credit for the kind of money they got. Speaking on the crews that was making money, you can speak on the Gotti boys. Guy boys got money too. Like guy boys, like well, them niggas got money. Like I think, like seeing that time where the money was so plenty. 
So it wasn't nobody who like Melvin getting money. Calio to St. Thomas was on fire. But they always been motherfuckers like the money just was so different. Like the money was a different ball game. Like niggas, like I can tell you, like I was probably with Vic, I was 14, 15 years old, counting me up. Room full of dudes. Like, cause that's what my golf order used to have us doing, just count money, would never let us fuck a drugs. But like I'm I like I was around like when my golf was doing that shit, my golf was fucking into like Warren Mays, Slam, Richard King. Like I saw a, I saw a lot of shit by me being so young and just running with my, my golf. So I knew a lot of fucking people. Like even from like fucking dancing them out to Florida, like I knew every fucking body because my golf all used to be every fucking well. So I knew a lot of older cats. I always knew a lot of old cats. You you can speak on meatball. On who? Meatball. I, I can't. I ain't never really knew me, but I saw him before. But I ain't know him like that. Like that's like the era before me. Like them, the Scullies, and all that kind of shit. Like that's that's big the era. But a lot of them dudes was gone by the time I got to school. Like um, who was around? Levi was still around. Uh, Tony D. Uh, Nate and Nap. Like, I, I saw a lot of that shit, but I wasn't in tune to it. Like, it was just when I was jumping off the course. Did you get the chance to write like, it like, 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 what I do remember, I remember these niggas out of the project called the Full Hall. Eric Maurice. Uh, but let me tell you something that's crazy. Like, I saw niggas in the project, and I saw this shit at a young age, and it fucked my head up. Because I know Black and Maurice could be beefing with uh, Jimmy Camus, right? Yeah. Hit a nigga named Ryan Camus out of our project. This nigga the real number one stuff. But um, I remember like uh, this dude, they both was in the same project. Like Jimmy, them used to be beefing with Black. And Black. Then that shit turned around. They became the full home. And it was catching. Like that's the first crew I remember when I was coming up. Like the full home niggas. Was... And you said Robert Camucci. Who who was that? I was Jimmy Camucci. Ronald was Ronald was under Jimmy. It was Jimmy Camucci, Eric Maurice, Black and Mo. And uh, I think the dude's name was Terry. I'm not sure. But they called this other four man. They were motherfuckers. Like, they was not to be fucked with. And that's the first two of niggas who I see that bomb the cool that I was looking like. Whoa. But Black and Mo, Black and Mo was the shabbiest. I can say Black and Mo was the shabbiest, but the shabbiest killer I ever saw. That nigga would wear the same pair of shoes. Right? That's like that, but that's just how the Magnolia was. Like we always was on some flash, and that's what Gangster got that shit from. Like Gangster and Black used to run a lot. That's what that's where the Gangster took the flash right from it. When your second album released in two thousand one, Streets got love for me. How that made you feel? I ain't hate. When your second album released in two thousand one, Streets got love for me. How that made you feel? The streets got love for me out. Yeah. Like the streets got love for me out with a lot of motherfuckers don't know like that yet. I was uh I was the second biggest independent in the country. The only person who I was sold me was Trick Dad. With that I'm a thug. That's crazy. But that's when we really got independent money. But mind you, Dodo got killed right before I dropped that album. So I went on a hiatus. Like once Dodo got killed, like I was I was on some other shit. So I wasn't doing I never promoted that album. I wasn't doing no concerts and none of that shit. And if you can, you can explain how Dodo got killed? Um, niggas followed Dodo in the St. Bernard. Like, we used to call this shit called spinning cones. We used to swing cones and all that kind of shit. And we used to always go by uh, going to St. Bernard, go fucking blinded. Blinded. The broad out of the, out the, out the St. Tom, but our pot. We used to always go fuck with them. But, but um, that day when Dodo got killed, we always sitting by a bar on Durgeon Road. And um, uh, Spitter used to always ride with Dodo. But for some strange reason, that day Dodo told Spitter he couldn't go. Spitter was mad than a motherfucker. And Dodo really ain't give a fuck, but he had other people with him. But Dodo pulled up to a store and the nigga uh, swung around the corner and ran him down. But 
Like, Doe got fucked up because, like, that's why I wear belts to this day. Doe got fucked up because he ain't had no belt on. He was fast, but motherfucker, his pants tripped. And niggas stood over. Wow. But Doe was fast, Doe's fast nigga in the world. But, like, that used to always wear handkerchief time around the pants and shit, like, all this shit. But that's what, got, that's what really got him killed. Who you will say the top five artists coming up in the city right now that ain't really getting their recognition? The top five artists? Yeah, in your opinion. You mean like new artists? And new, new artists, upcoming artists that come from the city, though. Bro, like the talent is too big out here, right? Like, I ain't never, I never saw that much talent in the city. The talent is too big. It's, it's too many motherfuckers to name. Like, the city on fire with that. Like, Why you think I, ain't, I, I, ain't so many artists is going mainstream from the city right now then? Huh? Why you think ain't too many artists is making it mainstream from the city right now? Uh mostly because uh a lot of us gotta step up. Like we gotta put a foundation again. Because it steps to it. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like that's why I started the podcast and shit like that. And I started the hip hop show. Like, because I think we got to help, we got to help push them out. But, like, you know this bitch popping, everybody come to this motherfucker and take something from it. All right. I, I know. I get it. But I think they just they just don't have a platform from the city. Like, it's a different ball game in the city. Like, and this bitch so small, like, if a, like, a lot of rappers don't fuck with each other. Because, like, if, if this bitch so small, like, if a nigga friend don't like you, then... He can't listen to your music. Like, this bitch is that small. Like, this bitch ain't put a block on. But I think it's getting better with that. I think it's, it's definitely getting better. Like, motherfuckers learning. They're understanding that, like, you winning numbers. But you, you couldn't just put a, a top five out there of uh, who you are say that your top five bro. is coming up? Top five, bro? Yo, just Man. in your opinion. In your opinion. Bro. It's hard, like, because I like a lot of these, like, I fuck with everybody. Uh, I say this, so, not even the top five, because that's like categorized. But who's some younger dudes that's just coming up doing their thing in the city that ain't really got a name, not talking about, like, the four nines? And uh, Smoke, uh, Cutter Black, J. Austin, Willow Boy, B3. Go. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, who my little homie name is? Q Perk with the hot song now. Oh. Um, man, it's a lot of them to do it, bro. And it's a lot of women, too. Girls. Like, you know what I'm saying? This shit is different right now. It's a lot of fucking talent in this. A whole lot of talent. They're going to be mad because they're going to be names. I mean, so get me this shit. But I fuck with all of them. Like, I do a. I do a, I do a I started doing a tape like two years ago called New New All, and I just put a tape together. And, you know, it just be like all the new upcoming, all the new upcoming artists. Gotcha. Nah. And what, before I, I'm going to get you on out of here in a few, I just want to ask you what's something you could leave with the people from the words huh? of Mr. Marcelo. I was trying to see what's something you could leave with the people, just words from you, words from the OG. Man, bro, look. Get your money and get out of the way. Keep God first. Let the haters hate because you need it for motivation. I mean, the biggest thing is keep God first. Hate going to come. When you, when you get the love, the hate going to come. Except, deal with it. Understand how to deal with it. And don't get tricked out your motherfucking spot. Yeah, that go Wild Willow right there. Young Wild Willow boy. Shout out Willow boy. Oh, God. You be saucy. You don't need to be fly for nothing. <laughs> no read. But they probably got on fine and out with the clothes right now for nothing. Ain't going nowhere. Hanging the hood. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> most definitely. Most definitely. There's a lot of solid audience out here. Like, I, I, like, this shit gonna get put together right. These niggas gonna get it right. Because they're they seeing the kind of money that they're going to make now. Like, first you got to make the small money. 
Like, when motherfuckers start getting on death door kid and all that kind of shit, like, I think Nino showed them that. Like, motherfuckers like Nino, Jay Jones showed them, like, the, the rise of the shit to show them how you can get money and make it with the top. Like, T.Y. did that, too. Um, the Jews, the soldier, like, a lot of them really did that to show motherfuckers, like, how you really start from the bottom, but you can really get some money out of it. Like, nowadays, the way the game goes, like, is motherfuckers could come straight in getting some money. Right. Like, you got the right product and the right promotion. You can make it for love. The nigga be too busy trying to be the baby and the baby and all that kind of shit. That ain't, that ain't for everybody. Nah, like, definitely. motherfuckers, like, people judge their success off other people's success and they ain't gonna live. I had a phone call. Uh, you be on ice like beer at a picnic. <laughs> <laughs> when you did your third album, still back, still brick living in 2004 on your own label, how you put that together and like, what you, how you felt about that album? Still brick living? Uh, yeah. I, like still for I was I, I still was in a, 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 a I wasn't really I was focused on music but not like like that like like I was still fucked up behind the door. So I did the shit but I was damn near like forced into it. It was a good album, don't get that twisted, but I wasn't on music like that, so I ain't do the proper promotion and all that kind of stuff. Because like it just came a time where I was just on some fuck music shit. Yeah. I still get like that sometimes. Did you ever get the chance to make music with C? C Murder? C Murder? Yeah, C Murder, first nigga to take me on tour. C Murder on uh, Streets Got Love. Like, I, I, I put C Murder and BG on the same song. I'm the reason, I'm, I, 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 inter- like, I call, I call um, C to get on the, um, the song with me and BG. Yeah. And, I was telling him, I, I was telling him I was gonna put BG on the song. He said he wanted to fuck with him. Like I put him, I hooked him two up. That's the reason why I'm all over that y'all heard of me. Video. Because after, after they did that record with me, then they, they jammed up and started fucking with each other. Oh my god, oh my god. I ain't gonna hold you up too much longer, OG. I appreciate you tapping. I don't know what you're doing.